It's Tuesday, November 18th, 2014. I'm Justin Hunt, this is DX Daily. Up first, yesterday we discussed Timbaland's bombastic reaction to the Lifetime movie, Aaliyah, the Princess of R&B. Translation, he hated it. The film's executive producer, Wendy Williams, responded to the critical backlash on her daytime talk show. Roll the clip, James. I see my Aaliyah movie broke the internet this weekend. <laughs> Everybody got an opinion. Well, I must tell you, whether you loved or hate you watched, it was the second highest uh, rated um, movie on all of cable this year so far. What the yeah, not fuck? Not this lifetime, but all of cable. I mean, I guess if ratings are the only thing that matter, congratulations. Next, DX contributor Ural Garrett dug into the 2014 album sales climate and came up with some interesting perspective. Fact number one, industry-wide album sales dropped 14% this year. Taylor Swift's 1989 is the only platinum selling album, and Iggy Azalea's new classic and Rick Ross's mastermind are number one and number two in hip-hop so far, selling 400,000 and 375,000 respectively. Fact number two, Streaming services like Pandora and Spotify grew by 51% and exceeded $1 billion in revenue for the first time ever. Hip hop is the second most streamed genre overall. Hip hop is also the second most illegally downloaded genre as well. Now, as you can imagine, the combination of a shrinking sales environment plus a streaming explosion would make it difficult for any artist to go platinum. But what would have happened to Nas if 1994 looked a lot like 2014? Ural offers this. Though this year was filled with various think pieces and editorials on Nas's pivotal Illmatic, many hip hop heads should figure in the fact that the Queens native's Columbia debut sold less than 60,000 in his first week while taking years to go platinum. In today's climate, Mr. Jones would have been dropped and eventually labeled a has been. Sales aside, is 2014 the worst year in rap history? Let us know in the comments section. If you want to see the full article, visit hiphopdx.com. Wrapping up, in yesterday's DX Daily, Method Man explained how Meth vs. Chef, off his platinum selling debut to Cal, was actually a battle for the beat between Method Man and Raekwon. Today, Raekwon shares his side of the story. Roll the clip, James. He always thought that was a little bad. Like, I wasn't really battling him. Like, Meth don't want to battle me, you know what I mean? And I don't want to battle him because he's, he's witty with words. He got his way of doing things, and I definitely got my way of doing things. So. At the end of the day, that's my boy. You know, I love him to death. Um, it was a miniature battle. You know, I was I was coming with mine, he was coming with his, and it was fun, though, man. But you know, I'm the greatest, man. You know, you know, I'm, you know who I am. You know, I'm a definitely knockout artist, for real. You know. There you have it. Two sides to the same song. Wu Tang Clan's a better tomorrow's expected on December second. Those are the day's most interesting hip hop headlines. Let us know what you think about in the comments section. And as always, for more music and news, visit hiphopdx.com.